What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're back at Copart for another Copart walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. How about a 1994 Toyota pickup truck? This is an ex Coca Cola truck, which is why I find it interesting. That and the fact that I just really love vehicles from the 80s and the 90s. This one's a, a little rough, but if you get close up to it, you'll notice enjoy Coca Cola on the side there. You can barely see it, but it's there. How about that, man? That is really cool. It's got tires that look brand new. Uh, the truck itself, though, yeah, she's she's been worked hard. That's for sure. It's been a work truck its whole life, and uh, there's not a straight panel on this body. In fact, even the bed is not straight. It is very wavy on the floor as well. So no doubt she's hauled some heavy loads in her day. No pun intended. Missing the antenna. But, you know, if you just needed a beater with a heater, I can't even guarantee it's got a heater yet, but if you just needed a beater, man, look no further because this is it right here. This thing is really cool. This is, uh... I don't think this is going to be an insurance vehicle, guys. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> such a such a rough truck, man. This is really sad. It's probably got like half a million miles on it. I, I can't believe. Look, look at this. Where did the foam even go? It's just, it's gone. It's completely gone. Manual transmission. The dashboard is falling apart. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, gorilla tape. Oh, nope. That's just regular tape. Like electrical tape or something. Oh man. Um, yeah. This, this is, uh, there's your e-brake. And the mileage. 247799. A quarter of a million miles. I honestly thought it would be closer to half a million. I, I really did. Does it have a, it does. Key is in it. Obviously dead as a doordale. Um, and she's rough. She's rough. If you could get this for like 300 bucks, yeah, I'd take it for $300. Um, any more than that, not a chance because after fees and everything, it's going to start getting kind of expensive. At $300, you're probably looking at paying five, five fifty for this. So, I don't want to... I don't want to spend much on this, but I'm willing to spend something. It does have a battery. That's always a good sign. Some cut wires. That's a great sign, too. Um, I don't see a date. That looks like an old battery. Oh, it is. Look at this. 2019. Yeah, really old battery, guys. Four years old. Let's check the oil, which has spider webs all over it. It's got oil. Okay, it's a manual transmission, so there's nothing to check in the trans. Brake fluid is full. Coolant. Uh-oh. Well, I sure don't see anything in there. Uh-oh. Maybe it's got a coolant leak. Maybe it's got a blown head gasket. I don't know. This thing's been sitting for a long time, guys. There are spider webs absolutely everywhere. It may not start. Um, do we have burnt wires? Hold up. Wait, no, that's grass. This is grass and weeds. I thought these were burnt, melted wires. Grass and weeds that have grown up from this thing sitting. Look, it grew through the hood. Look at this. You can't make this up. Yeah, she's been sitting a long time. Now, I have no expectations that this thing is going to start. None at all. But it'd be nice just to hear it crank over. Before we do, let's go check the gas cap. That, uh, that'll tell us a lot. We could take a sniff of the fuel and, oh no. Uh-oh. Huh. It's got a lock on it. So I guess we can't do the, uh, the old sniff test of the fuel then. Interesting, and I don't think this came with any keys for the... No, it didn't. It didn't come with any keys for the gas, unless that one key works everything. Let's see what it does, guys. I'm going to put my foot on the brake. 
push in the clutch, put it in neutral. It actually shifts just fine. What is this? Oh, some knives, some bulbs. All right. I don't want to know what those rags were used for. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Boy, this, yeah, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's rough. Gas gauge shows completely empty. Uh-oh. Well, that ain't good, is it? I hear relays occasionally clicking. Oh, now nothing. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Huh. So, I can tell you the issue that we're having is a power issue. Could be a ground. So I'm going to move from the battery ground. I'm going to find somewhere else to stick it, like right here on the engine. Maybe that'll help. Um, we've got a power issue. I can tell because when I push on the brakes, you can hear that annoying buzzer get quieter. It's not doing that now. Yeah. There we go. The starter was stuck. It's been so long since this thing has been started or cranked over, the starter was frozen. Well, it cranks. Could be the solenoid is sticking. All right. Well, I'm not going to continue cranking on it. I never expected it to run. Obviously, it's it's been parked a long time. All I wanted to do was hear it crank over. I guarantee you the fuel system is trash on it. It's fuel injected, obviously, so there's no carburetor. Um, carburetor would probably be a lot easier on something like this. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks that it's fuel injected because your fuel injectors, as they sit, the gas varnishes inside of it, kind of like in a carburetor bowl, right? And you got to take the carburetor apart, clean it up. But usually you can put gas in a carburetor. Those things will fire right back up. You know, 20 years later, carburetors will still run. Fuel injection doesn't work that way. The fuel sits in the rail, sits in the injector, sits in the regulator, and it just varnishes and it clogs everything up. Before you know it, you need a, a fuel rail, you need injectors, a regulator, a fuel pump, fuel filter. You know, it, it, it just makes it a lot more difficult than if you just had an old school carburetor sitting on top. But still, I'm excited because it cranked over. That's all I wanted. Now that I know it cranks and it sounded like it was healthy, I would jump on this. I would give it a shot. Maybe we could get it running and driving down the road. What I would do with it, I have no idea. I have no use for it, but it's another great vehicle from the 90s. Next, we've got a Trailblazer that claims that it has a V8 under the hood. Both fenders have this little badge that says V8 on it. And for the life of me, I cannot remember a Trailblazer that came with a V8 except for the Trailblazer SS. But I'm guessing... I'm wrong. Maybe they made a limited run of the Trailblazer with a 5.3. I just don't remember. But as you can see, the badge is on the same spot on both fenders. But I'll be completely honest with you, that does not look like a place that any auto manufacturer would be like, let's put a badge there, right on the front by the headlights. It's out of place. That doesn't look natural at all. If you're going to put a V8 badge somewhere, you'd put it somewhere over here, you know, not on the front. So I have a suspicion that somebody went and got some V8 badges off of, I don't know, a, a Ford or a Mercury or something, and they just threw them on here, but I could be wrong. It's an LT trim, so it's got the leather interior, scratches everywhere. Looks like they took this thing off-roading on a regular basis. Um, it's pretty rough. And then, of course, it's wrecked in the front. The damage to the front doesn't look that bad, though, in case you missed it, um, unless there's frame damage. This fender got pushed in, but I think it got pushed in by the door. Um, fender took a direct impact, so did the hood. 
so I'm assuming that it pushed all this back. The uh, fender apron and everything might be okay under there, and then everything lower on the front doesn't look that bad. Crash bar has a little bit of damage, but nothing too serious. I don't think this would be too big of a deal to put back together, guys. We'd have to pop the hood, which is probably jammed, so we probably won't even be able to pop the hood on this, which I really want to do. I want to know if this really has a V8 under the hood. Does it have power? No. Dead as a doornail. Great. Comes with two key fobs, two sets of keys. That's nice. Most of the time you only get one. Let's put the key in. Yeah, of course, of course it's dead. I don't see anything in here designating this as a V8, but... Oh, the hood popped. All right. So we're finally gonna see. Moment of truth. I want you guys to comment below right now because I have never heard of a V8 that wasn't an SS. <laughs> I'll be. You're serious. It's a, it's a legit, it's a legit V8. Really? <laughs> okay, man. You know what the great thing is about coming out here and looking at all these cars is I learn something new almost every time I come out. That That's legit a, a 5.3. I didn't know they ever did this. Huh. Okay, well, now you know. So the question is, how bad's the damage? Uh, the, the biggest concern for me is this fender apron because of how this is shoved out, that is shoved in. It makes me worry that something's off here. But if you take a look, it looks like everything is nice and straight. It's just the fender. That's it. Just the fender. You replace the fender, you replace the hood, you replace... I wouldn't even replace the crash bar. It's got a dent in it, guys. I wouldn't be overly concerned with that. Fender, bumper, grill, hood. I think you're good to go because I don't think there's any damage to this side at all. Uh-uh. Yeah, this... This is an easy fix. Really easy fix. The only problem that I see with it is it really needs a complete paint job because, well, I don't know how well it comes out on camera, but, I mean, it is just scratched like crazy. It looks like this thing went through a barbed wire fence, and, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, it's... Look at this. All the way up. And even up here. I mean, this thing went through something. I, I, I don't know what they were doing um, all the way to the taillights. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty bad, guys. Um, Interior-wise, though, looks like somebody really, really loved this thing. WeatherTech floor mats. It even has the bumper, which I would imagine is not usable anymore. Um, you got a DVD player. You got a sunroof. You got nice leather interior. Let's take a look at the roof and see if there's any damage up there. A lot of scraping but no, no direct damage, so the roof is fine. This one would definitely be worth putting back together. I think I want to hear this one run, guys. I'm, in, I'm interested in this. It wouldn't take much to put a few, a few minor body panels on this thing, send it into Mako, get it repainted, and done, you know? Pretty easy fix. Let's see what it does. I bet it fires right up. Boy, the scratches are so bad on this, though. But the interior just makes up for it. It looks so good in here, guys. I mean, even the seat is in excellent shape. The miles. Wow, I thought this was going to be a low mileage unit. 110,491 miles on the odometer. Of course it runs. Of course it runs. Oil pressure is pegged out to 80 PSI. That's pretty good oil pressure there. Not bad. This thing runs like a top. Absolutely perfect. You got uh, power windows, power locks, heated seats, power seats. I assume this is a full-time four-wheel drive. Something in the back is clanking and clacking. You got digital climate control, dual zone. Boy, that is annoying back there, whatever that is. Look at it. It's perfect. Brakes feel good. I'll put it into gear. Right into reverse. Forward. Backward. 
So yeah, this is either a two-wheel drive model or this is full-time four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, however you want to put it. Boy, whatever is making noise back there, can you shut up? My goodness, that is just, that is annoying. There we go. Steering feels good. Yeah, I like this, guys. I like this a lot. And what an easy fix. Alternator is charging up nicely, so we can shut this off. You could balance a nickel on this engine. Like, no joke, this thing runs that damn smooth. Listen to it. Wow. This is a good one, guys. In my opinion. This is one I wouldn't hesitate to jump on. The damage looks worse than it is. As long as you don't mind sending it in for a paint job, you'll be all right. Oh, that seat is so far up, though. Let's test out the power seats. It works. There we go. It's pretty roomy in this thing, too. I mean, not bad. I've had several of these back in the day, but mine were always the, uh, the straight sixes. Um, never had one with a V8. I did not know these came in a V8 form factor unless you got the Trailblazer SS. So this is news to me, man. Some of you are probably laughing like, you didn't know that? I did not know that. I had really just effortless like butter yeah i did not know that guys yeah dead is the door now you can expect oh now the key stuck in it yeah you could expect almost anything you get out here is going to need a battery just just accept that let's see the tires we've got douglas so it's a walmart brand tire tires look to be in good shape back there let's check up here we have something different here this is a uh what is it? An, an Aria? An Aria AH7, but it's got good tread. Maybe they just replaced them in pairs, right? Let's see what we got here. We've got an Aria AH7, yep, with good tread as well. Then I expect a Douglas in the back. Nope, a Firestone. But it has good tread, so, okay. It's got mismatched tires, but they're all good. They'll all last a while, so... With that, we're going to move on to the next one. Man, I almost hate to show this car because of how smashed it is, but dang it. A 92 Buick Park Avenue. It's not an Ultra, but it was still a beautiful car. Look at that roof. Man, it was kind of a basic model. It didn't have leather interior or anything. I still hate to see cars like this that were survivors, man. They were still getting around. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of that uh, of that roof. That's not really, that's not really something I'm into on most cars. I think some cars look good with it, but on something like this, was that a Landau top? Um, a Buick? Uh, not really, not from this generation, guys. Uh, it just looks, it looks off. But you can see it had the, uh, the cloth interior. It even said Park Avenue right on the seat, embroidered. Beautiful car. Oh, what is this? It's like an old, an old book, like a black book. Like maybe there's chick's phone numbers in there for the guy that used to own this. We're not going to mess with it, though. It was obviously in some kind of a collision before because, well, if you take a look, it had, uh, it had hood pins. And I think we all know that a Park Avenue isn't fast enough to require the use of hood pins. But that's not all. If you take a closer look under here, you'll see the header panel is actually white. And obviously the car is green. But if you take it a step further and look down here, you'll see that the bumper is maroon. And then out here, it was green. So this car was... Obviously, and look, you can see how this little header panel here, this was all cobbled together, man. Take a look at the uh, the core support over there. I mean, you can see the rust, it is smashed. And it's not like it was smashed from this accident. It was smashed long ago. 
<laughs> and it's got all the rust there to prove it. So anyway, I love seeing these cars. I hate seeing them wrecked, uh, but I would love to find one of these. This is one that I'd actually love to find and own. It'd be a Buick Park Avenue Ultra, the one with the supercharged V6, the air suspension, completely loaded. If I could find one of those, man, I'm telling you, I would be cruising in that every day. So I'm casually walking through the yard when I stumble upon this Ford F-150 pick em up truck. And uh, <laughs> I, saw, I saw all this on the back and I thought, oh boy, that just, yeah, there's so much going on there. Stand for the flag, kneel for the cross. Uh, F it, holler boys. I'm not quite sure what holler boys is, but all right. Of course, you've got the reg neck life and you know, right above it. It only makes sense. You got the Trump 2024 sticker as well. This truck is, uh, man, she's decked out guys. So what I'm trying to tell you, you got some camo for the seats down there in the bed. This thing was, uh, this thing was decked out. It's ready to go. Oh, and don't forget the don't tread on me sticker on the back. It's got it all, man. It's got it all. Is that Woody Woodpecker? An angry Woody Woodpecker? I'm probably wrong about that. I don't know what that one means, so you guys can you can holler at me down below. Let's see what was wrong with it. Oh, light front end collision. It doesn't look that bad. I mean, the truck itself is pretty bad anyway. It was kind of rough. It's got hail... Oh, 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 wait a minute. Well, I was going to say it's got hail damage all over it, but... Yeah, that, uh, that'll do it. I'll bet. I'll bet the damage again is not to the fender apron, but I'll bet you could just replace that fender, replace the hood. Obviously, bumper. It doesn't look like it took any kind of a impact down below. This would be an easy fix, but yeah, truthfully, it is scuffed, scratched, and hail dinged all up, man. This isn't one I'd mess with. Next, one of my favorite cars from back in the day, man. I wanted one of these so bad, and honestly, I forgot they even existed until I saw one here. This is, uh, what, a 94 Nissan 300ZX? I remember when these things first came out, I had to have one. This is a 96, a 96 300ZX. I wanted one so, so bad. Um, some of these were twin turbo. I'm not sure if this is or not, but I'll tell you what, if that exhaust is any indication, take a look at that. Yeah, uh, it's got it's got some exhaust on it. That's for sure. I mean, the car is completely squashed, guys. This is this is definitely not one I'd be looking at. But I had to show it because I totally forgot about these. I did. I forgot all about these and the T-tops too. Are you serious? Um, this one's yeah. It's it's done. This one's finished. I'd love to know what's under the hood, but I guarantee you the hood is stuck. This car had a hell of a life man i don't know if you can tell but it's hail damaged everywhere so not only was the car technically totaled from the hail damage but somebody just they had a they had a time with this man this thing got all kinds of boogered up take a look at that dash instrument cluster 160 on the speedometer 9000 is where it peaks out on rpms looks like it redlines at seven miles on this thing were what were they 168 wow yeah no joke it had some miles guys and it's an automatic i don't know if you can see the shifter down there but she's an automatic ah <laughs> um i don't think it's gonna be a turbo i didn't see a boost gauge anywhere i could have missed it though honestly i wouldn't even looking let's see if we can get this hood up nope nope definitely not a not a twin turbo just a naturally aspirated three liter. These were great engines. Um, I'm pretty sure Nissan used this in just about everything. Uh, the Maxima had this engine, great engine, excellent engine. Unfortunately, it's a timing belt motor. I, I just, I, I hate timing belt motors. I really do. I am not a fan of timing belts. I prefer timing chains, but to each their own. This was a, uh, there we go. It's sort of, it's latched enough that the hood isn't gonna fly up. It's, uh, in, in its current condition, it's not a beautiful car, but these cars in general, I think are absolutely gorgeous. Give me a twin turbo with the T-tops with a manual transmission, and I will show you a very happy guy. Last one, ladies and gentlemen, a 2019 Mercedes-Benz S 
450. I think I've shown you this car before, but I'm only bringing it up now because this is actually up for bids right now. And I thought I had a chance. I did. I, I totally thought I had a shot at this car because it's flood damaged. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how bad it is now, but the first time we came out here and looked at it, the interior was, uh, oh yes. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that'll make you, that'll make you sick is what it'll do. Oh, we've got spiders that have moved in. It's still got power. It, uh, it's, it smells so, just so bad in here. I mean, yeah, it's hard to even walk up to it. It was pretty bad the first time we got up here. Um, this is a run and drive, but if you'll notice, there are spider webs. You probably can't see them. There are spider webs literally everywhere. And you come over here, take a look at these. Can you see them? The spider web shining in the light. It's, it's literally everywhere, guys. There are... Yeah, I don't even know. The screen is small, so it's hard for me to see what you guys can even see. But there are spider webs literally everywhere in this car. Everywhere. Makes me really not want to get into it. Apparently, the spiders don't, uh, they don't mind the smell. Even the entire footwell down here is just covered in spider webs. So, for sure, spiders moved into this car. I'm going to sit in it. I'm going to try to start it up. It fired right up. Wow. Boy, does it stink. It smells so bad in here. Beautiful screen, though. What's the mileage on this thing? Obviously, it's got some error codes. And then uh, over here, you've got this beautiful screen as well. I love, I love these S-Classes. Maybe it's time I buy another one. Um, this one's not going to happen, though, guys. Right front malfunction. Yeah, there's a bunch of wires and stuff disconnected in here. So obviously it's it's gonna have some problems. Yeah, yeah, active brake assist, malfunction. It's it's got pre-safe inoperative. Can we just get out of all this? Blah blah blah. Active brake assist only got forty-three thousand nine hundred and nine miles on the odometer. Beautiful car, it runs great, like I said. I'll reach down here to the spider webs here. It's the important window work, it does. That's all that matters. I don't care about any of the other stuff. Anyway, I thought I thought for sure is like this will be a a car I can pick up. Well, I've been waiting on this thing to go up for sale for months, and it never did. And I kind of just forgot about it. That's the that's the first issue. Boy, it's loud under that hood. My goodness. Yeah, that's chatter, chatter, chatter. Really loud. Anyway. I forgot about the car. The body is actually in pristine condition. The interior is in excellent condition. There's some kind of a big scrape going down the side, but I think that will come off. Tires are excellent. I mean, it's a low mileage S-Class. What do you expect? There's no hail damage. You've got a, oh, wow. There's all the interior parts, so that's good. There's trim as well, so they took off the weather stripping, so water can continue to get in. That's perfect honestly though runs great probably drives great there's some interior tidbits that need to be put back together like over there where the seat belt is they took all that apart i'm not sure how water got in here or why it's a flood car but it you can smell it definitely a flood car it makes my stomach turn uh breathing it in so i'm sure that it's unhealthy with, with that said though i have no doubt that if you clean this thing out and ozone it and then clean the interior out. It'd probably be just fine. But uh, like I was saying, this is one that I was absolutely interested in bidding on. It's been going for, last time I saw it, uh, $10,000, $11,000, something like that, which is a really good price. I mean, honestly, it's a good price for, a, for an S-Class, especially one from this generation. The problem that I have with it is I've already spent all my money. Like I've spent close to $100,000 on vehicles and i know that seems hard to believe but uh yeah i'm having a hard time believing it too but like i've spent all of my money literally i have spent something like ninety seven thousand dollars on cars from the 80s and the 90s um i could have had this so i'm out of money but hey if you've got some money laying around and you can win the bid here it is 
uh, this is one that I think would make a great vehicle if you can uh, if you can get it for yourself. Assuming you can get the insurance company to let it go because they have just been relisting it. With that, we're going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.